guys. We've made it through traffic. We bought our tickets. We did. We've stood in line. No, we're broke. And now <laughs> we're definitely broke. And now we are ready to jump on the ultimate thrill ride that is WrestleMania 33. Which now, is we're also not, not not saying Illuminati confirmed, but it's also my rationale why the revival are winning the three times. Oh, all right. Um, Back over there. Now we're not necessarily now. thrilled about everything that's happening at WrestleMania, but it is WrestleMania, so we're excited because we're wrestling nonetheless. Fans. So uh, there's just something about the word WrestleMania that just kind of gets the the blood pumping. Yeah, it's it's like a full. Regardless if your team's in the Super Bowl, you still watch the Super Bowl because it's time. the Super Bowl. For it's us, it's the best bowl. For us, it is WrestleMania, so we're gonna watch it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna predict, and he's gonna host it. So let us know what's happening about the all thirteen matches. It's gonna happen in six fucking hours. All right. So the first two hours are the WrestleMania kickoff show. And only one of these matches deserves to be here. Hosted by Renee Young. Was it Jerry Lawler, Booker T, and Shawn Michaels? Yes. Oh, yeah, I forgot Shawn Michaels was going to be on the panel with him. You can't have the WrestleMania panel without Mr. WrestleMania. You, you can't have anything WrestleMania without Mr. WrestleMania. It's yeah. just, just, just how it goes. All right. Let's get the clusterfuck out of the way. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. 30 guys with <coughs> cat. 30 guys with cat. Cat's gone. Nope. Now he's gone. A <laughs> uh, lot of people. There's a lot of people. I'm not going to list off everybody. Legitimately, just in your head, imagine everyone who's actively on the roster that's not in a match pre-show or otherwise. Uh, it's the SmackDown Tag Teams with Kalisto, Mojo, and Dolph. And Cruz. And Cruz. And then... Extra people from Raw. Raw sprinkles on top. With <laughs> Raw. Yeah. There's literally 17 guys from SmackDown and 13 guys from Raw. Yeah. So. Uh, and don't be surprised if cruiserweights get thrown in. Uh, if NXT guys show if up. NXT guys shows up. Specifically, Elias Samson has probably the best odds. Probably. Um. Potentially Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger again, just because they probably want to get that fucking pop. Oh yeah. Uh, because, I mean, that was over as fuck in the I'm going to be real. If Ty Dillinger pulls a Baron Corbin this year, he will be the first person to actually benefit from this win. Probably. Um, who do you think is going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? i got to go with Sami Zayn. That's going to be a big old middle finger to Stephanie McMahon the night after WrestleMania. Well, you know, I'm going to go with Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman. Because Monday Night Braun... That's the thing. Uh, yeah, I mean... <coughs> yeah. I, I think as is, is Monday Night Raw a, a bit would be for this to happen, I think the final three will probably be Big Show, Sami Zayn, and Braun Strowman. All three Raw guys? Yeah, probably. Oh, I will be uh, not happy about my that. My guess is Braun will eliminate Big Show... Sammy will then, like, halluva kick Braun from behind and get him, like, over the top, but Braun will get back in and eliminate Sami Zayn, something of that nature. Um, we're going to have that Sammy hopeful moment, but he's Sami Zayn. He doesn't get to win anything. That's fair. So. Moving on. Moving on to the next one. SmackDown's got a match for us, and it happens to be... A very attractive six-pack. Very attractive. Uh, six-pack challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss defends against five different challengers. That's the former champion, Naomi. Uh, the other former champion, Becky Lynch. And uh, Natalia, uh, Mickey James, and Carmella with uh, James Ellsworth, who again <coughs> is another person I wouldn't be surprised in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Good point. James Ellsworth. He's going to win. Because uh, he's a physical specimen, man. Wait, you see the biceps wait, on those guys? Are you going for Braun Strowman or are you going go for James Ellsworth? You got a big one, man. Braun Strowman. All right. James Ellsworth is my backup. All right. Fair enough.
Uh, He's just now deciding. I've I've already decided and wrote my picks down, so I I'm, I'm gonna have to go with Naomi on this one. Yeah. Yeah, it's <coughs> it makes way too much sense. Right. It's her hometown. She lost the belt not because that she had lost the match, but she had to forfeit it because she was injured. Uh. You know, I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like she's been okay enough. This whole time. You know, I like the fact that the crowd is super behind her. Yeah, no, th that's really good. But like for me, it's just like the whole thing is like, okay, Seth Rollins gets injured, and there's like constant internet updates and stuff about Seth Rollins' condition. I haven't seen one thing about Naomi's injury, at all, about her rehabbing, how severe her injury is, any of this kind of stuff. Yeah, I haven't seen any of it. I think this is mostly WWE fictitiousness. She, okay. she probably hurt her knee, yeah. It probably was, like, sprained or something. But, and not dis not, not saying that it's fake, because, I mean, if somebody's like, oh, you can't do, she wasn't faking it. Why would she give up the belt? Because WWE realized they gave it to her one pay-per-view too early. And this is their way of going back and going, oh, this is when we actually meant for you to win. Sorry. <laughs> uh, In your see, hometown. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see... I'd be okay with almost anyone winning this match. The only person that wouldn't thrill me would be Carmella. Absolutely. To be honest. She's the weakest wrestler Yeah. out of all six of them. And, and I think she has the least amount of presence out of everyone. Yeah. Uh, she throws a mean super kick, but that's about all she's got going for her. And she can moonwalk. And yeah. she's dating James Ellsworth. Or something like that. Don't tell Big Cat. It's his friend that's a girl. <laughs> By the way, I'm also going with Naomi. All right, yeah, same reasons, basically. Yeah. It's, it was the, she lost it too quick. Uh, Alexa did a really good job of kind of picking up the, you know, what, you know whatever, whatever the reasoning was to take the title off of her, whether it was an injury, whether it was just storyline. Alexa did a really good job of keeping up that heel persona. We had the, the stuff with Becky Lynch, which brought in Mickey James. So yeah. we, we, had, we had a good continuation with this. Now it's a good time to give the title back to Naomi. Exactly. Plus, like I said in the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, uh, we're going to get that hopeful, the high hopeful moment for Sami Zayn as the big baby face went on the pre-show, mm -hmm. and he's going to get cut away and lose to Braun Strowman. If I would have picked Braun, or if I would have picked Sami Zayn or a different baby face to win, I probably wouldn't pick Naomi for this one because I think if it was, if I thought a baby face was going to win the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, I'd pick probably Alexa Bliss to retain in this. Because that would be Naomi almost winning and then getting cut off at the end. Uh, gotcha. One of those two, and I think it, it could be interchangeable, but one of those two matches is going to have that super hopeful babyface moment to get flattened out by a bad guy. We're not having babyfaces take both those matches. Alright. Uh, and then finally, we've got the Cruiserweight Championship match. The King of the Cruiserweights versus a double, the greatest man who ever lived, Austin Aries. Uh, do you think taking this one? I, you know, just the fact that you were talking about like there's the there's that baby face moment, you know, and then there's the one cut off. I went with all baby faces winning on the pre show because I picked Austin Aries. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it seems like this is the big moment. This is you know Neville's been dominating everyone. Yeah. So we're finally gonna get the guy that meets his match. Uh, I this is I'm. I'm so torn on this one. This needs to be on the show. <laughs> this needs to be on WrestleMania. Because, uh, I mean, Neville's had a decent title right now. Yeah, he's had, he's had it since the Rumble. Uh, and he's literally, since returning, has, like, crushed everyone. He has, been, been in the he has been completely dominant since returning in December. Yeah. And now that we're going to be in April, and he's still looking great. He's yeah. still one of the best things on 205 Live. I'm going Austin Aries as well, but I would be 100% not surprised at all if they kept it on Neville. Austin might need two shots to dethrone the king. Uh, that being said, I'm still going with Austin Aries just because it's WrestleMania and this is where we have the happy moments for people when they make their comebacks. Yeah. And this, the comeback is the story of WrestleMania this year. And I, th I think this particular, like, I think 
with the way that 205 Live is being perceived right now, Austin Aries is a good injection of reasons to watch 205 Live. Yeah. And having him be the, the new champion as the new season begins post-WrestleMania, I think, it, I think that would mean more than a continuation of Neville from the 205 Live that people still aren't totally sold on. Yeah, yeah, and, and like I was saying, this seems to be like one of the themes of WrestleMania this year is the comeback. Yeah, because Austin Aries coming back from facial surgery, uh, Naomi coming back from her knee Naomi injury. coming back from this, Seth, Seth Rollins. Rollins. Uh, I mean, this whole the main event, the whole thing is Goldberg's big comeback story. Comeback is one of the big themes of WrestleMania this year, so I think that's going to play into it. And point. not all the comeback people are going to win, but one of them is going to be Austin Aries. All right. All right, so the pre-show is out of the way. Yes. So let's let's just talk about some other matches. The other ten. Yeah. Uh, so many matches. All right. There's a big Dark Horse match on this card. And I don't mean that by their gimmicks uh, or anything of that nature. But it's, it's the one match that has the potential to be great or terribly disappointing. Which, literally, if you're talking about WrestleMania, you can say every single match has the ability to be great or highly disappointing. But I'm talking about Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker. Oh, Jesus. We're going here first. First. Uh, it's not for a title. It's not for the streak. This is for basically Roman Reigns' credibility. Um, it, it is one of those things, you know, it's, uh, again, we're now being hit with all the rumors, ooh, this could be Undertaker's last WrestleMania match. Uh, don't hold your breath until he has one against John Cena. Good point. Um, I mean, Next year. at this point, it, 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 we can, we are at that position. He did lose the streak. So at this position, like, everyone after 30... It's just Could like sprinkles on the yeah. cake at this point. Is this Undertaker's like, yeah, sure, I'll have another match. Yeah. We're just he waiting needs, for that one year. one more paycheck to, like, pay his rent for the rest of the year. Yeah, we're, we're, just, we're just waiting for that one year where Undertaker's like, nah, I'll sit this one out. And then one goes, <gasps> Undertaker's not at WrestleMania? And then he comes back the next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, let's be real. It's Undertaker, and I don't think he's going to be... He hasn't missed a Mania since 16. Is that true? Yeah. Fuck. He's only missed two WrestleManias since his, Ever. Since his debut. 11 and 16. 11 and 16 are the only WrestleManias he has not been at. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, the guy's a beast. I feel like Undertaker is literally not going to miss a Mania match until he cannot physically wrestle. It's, 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 it's going to be like, eventually when we get there, it's going to be sad. Because it's going to be kind of like watching Ric Flair flop around. But taller. <laughs> And darker and scarier. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, at this point, because Undertaker realizes now at this point he could really be used to help put people over. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he wins or loses, having the match against Undertaker at WrestleMania puts a lot of eyes on you. Right. And that's what's happening with Roman Reigns now. Uh, what are your opinions going into this match? I'm curious. Because this is one of the only matches where, like, I'm curious about people's insight into at all. Because a lot of the times, it's just like, you see the matches at WrestleMania, and especially on this one, because there's so many belts in WWE right now. Right. It's like, belt match, belt match, belt match, belt match. This one's not for a belt. This one's like storyline driven yeah. only. And it's not a good storyline. No, not really. It, it, makes, it makes absolutely no sense as to why... This makes less sense than him versus Shane, I think. Cause at least, I don't know. Because at, le at least him versus Shane, it was... Vince made the match. Yeah. Well, I think for me, this is Undertaker's piss that Roman Reigns eliminated him. But that's not how this was set up. This was Braun Strowman called out Roman Reigns, and then Undertaker showed up to face against Braun Strowman. And then Braun's like, I'm cool, and then Roman Reigns came out and was a dick. Yeah. So then there was but a I don't match. But I don't think Undertaker came out to face Braun Strowman. Undertaker came out because Roman Reigns got called out. And he was going to steal Braun Strowman's thunder and beat up Roman Reigns. I don't know. I don't... 
I don't know how to feel about this match because The Undertaker is my favorite wrestler of all time. Roman Reigns, because I don't have to wear that stupid fucking shirt right now, or ever again, potentially, is not one of my favorite wrestlers at all. I I have been I, I was a big Roman Reigns supporter last year in his match against Triple H. I was a big I was one of the few people that was actually cheering for Roman Reigns when we were at WrestleMania 31. There was a very heavy Brock Lesnar contingent. There was a lot. There was a heavy Brock Lesnar contingent right in our area where we, we were sitting. We had a guy we called Brock Lesnar guy in our area that we were talking to on a regular basis. Yes. Um, but I mean, I, I, I'm gonna be. I'm on the same level with you. I don't want to hate Roman Reigns. I, exactly. It's it, it's it's a very weird situation that I'm in where I'm like. But he's being lumped into this thing where we're just getting so much Roman Reigns doing the same Roman Reignsy shit. Exactly. He's not doing anything to warrant the type of push that he's getting. Yeah. So that being <coughs> said, one good match every like two months doesn't. That being Be said, like, I want something to happen in this match that makes me go, okay, Roman might, de- not even does, but might deserve the spot that he's in. Yeah. He is facing one of the most legendary characters of all fucking time. In his fourth WrestleMania, I think? Yeah. So, that's some pretty big fucking shoes to fill. I'm I'm picking Roman to win. Really? I don't like saying it, but it's it's, it's there. I don't you know, want He's failed you before. I know. And don't get me wrong, I want him to fail so fucking hard on Sunday. But after Brock Lesnar beat The Undertaker and has literally done jack fucking shit with that win at least Roman would be on TV regularly to let us know he beat The Undertaker Yeah, and would actually use that as a benefit to his character I want him to be healed because I don't think with as much heat as he already has going against The Undertaker and potentially winning there's no coming back from that not really. There's a, you have a very slim chance of ever getting a babyface pop ever again. Literally, I mean, especially like within the early vicinity of the match, the only way Roman Reigns could beat The Undertaker and come out looking popular is if like Undertaker fucking cheated the whole match, which is so anti-Undertaker. Yeah. Like if Undertaker just came out and started throwing dick kicks left and right, please. So, Undertaker kicks Roman Reigns and Vicks and just gets himself just, disqualified and walks away. I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. And <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, I'm voting for Roman Reigns. Well, we're going to disagree again. Thank I'm you. voting for The Undertaker. Thank you. Just out of sheer principle, if Undertaker wins at WrestleMania 99.9999999999% of the time. Thank you. Um, but, I have my little asterisks about... I will be okay if Roman Reigns wins this match if and only if he either has a full-blown heel turn to do it or wins with enough heelishness that it's planting the seeds that he's going to turn heel in the extremely near future. Like, if he low-blows Undertaker while the referee's not looking or if he thumbs him in the eye or, you know, or if he, like, fucking hits him with a chair when the referee's down from a bump spot or something, and that leads him directly into winning the match, and Undertaker doesn't do anything of the same nature to, like, war it back. Because once, like, if Roman hits him with a chair and then Undertaker hits him back with a chair, you're back on moot ground. Yeah. It (coughs) needs to be heavy heel Roman or a really good match. Uh, But if Roman beats him in in a jerky asshole fashion... I'm, a, I'm actually okay with that. Uh, but I'm still voting for The Undertaker because uh, Roman the... Reigns, know your role. I'd say shut your mouth, but you don't talk a lot anyways. Okay. We got that weight off of your shoulders. 
There's only one other shitty match that I really don't want to talk about. Um, let's talk about a couple of the lesser important championship matches. I'm not right. saying that a championship is less important than any other one, but uh, we just learned on SmackDown, uh, or maybe it was on like WWE Facebook after Raw, that the triple threat tag team championship match, the club defending against Enzo and Cass and uh, Shane Zaro, is going to be a triple threat ladder match. Yep. So we're going to try and capture a little bit of the uh, Intercontinental Championship ladder match magic that we've been getting crossed with uh, a little like throwback to WrestleMania 2000 and X7 when we had triple threat tag team ladder matches. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the TLC matches. Yeah, where the first one was the, just tri the triangle was the tri ladder and then mm -hmm. TLC 2. T TLC. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really iffy about this match just as a whole, because I don't see Cass doing anything impressive Here. in this match. I don't see Gallows doing anything out of the blue, out of his comfort zone. I, 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 said, I, I said after SmackDown when it was announced that the only people that I think actually... And I'll add one more. There's one from each team that I think the latter's benefit, and that'll be Enzo, Anderson, and Cesaro. Yeah, those are the three that are that are going to be able to do something with the ladders <coughs> that's going to make the ladders mean anything other than just being a weapon. Yeah, Enzo and Anderson are just kind of lumped into that category. I think, they're, the they're the smallest guys. Smaller guys. They're the smallest guys. Um, in the match. Yeah, for me, the team that's really going to pop in this match is Sheamus and Cesaro. Sheamus and Cesaro have both now been in multiple multi-man ladder matches yeah. in WWE. Sheamus has been in a lot of Money in the yes. Bank and multi-person ladder matches. And I know he can hold his own. Yeah, she He's done a lot Sheamus of cool is a beast, spots. So. I mean, fucking his, he had the, what, like the number one contenders ladder match with John Morrison a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. And he, I don't he, say that about a lot of Sheamus matches. And he hurt, a, he hurt himself going balls to the wall in a Money in the Bank match. Yeah. Uh... So. And Cesaro is just Cesaro, so everything he does is fucking magical. Because Magic he's lucky charms, he's magically delicious. Because Cesaro. Because Cesaro. Um With that being said, and I know this goes against again, both of the like like I said, if you go back to the predictions at the end of the midweek wrap up, uh there's another triple threat tag team championship match on that one. And <coughs> I'm gonna say the exact same thing almost word for word in this match. The champions retaining Seems to be kind of like the best way to go on this one. But then in the WWE fan service way, like, the next best choice would be go Enzo and Cass. Because at this point, the crowd's kind of actually dying on Enzo and Cass. But they're good at hyping the crowd up, at least for the first part of their shtick. This is going to be the best way to keep the fan service of Enzo and Cass is have that rowdy WrestleMania crowd pop for their title win. Yeah, but I'm voting for Cesaro and Sheamus. I'm voting for Enzo and Cass. Because it only makes sense that they would win in a ladder match because they're going to be the most adept in the ladder match scenario. That's fair. I, for me, I'm going Enzo and Cass because they haven't had the titles yet. Yeah. And it's WrestleMania, and th this is... I. Why not? I mean, I w I personally would love the club to retain and have them do something new on on Raw. <coughs> Unfortunately, there's nothing new for them. There's nothing to not, do. exactly. There's nothing new for them to do. Unless and, you hashtag push the shining stars. Or for some reason, because they were the host of WrestleMania, and now the New Day is going to get their shot again at being a three-time tag team champion. But regardless, I would love to see the club win. Um, I'm, I guess I'm not opposed. I'm not really opposed to anyone winning this match. But I have a feeling this could very well, and this could be like like the Intercontinental Championship ladder match that they like at our Mania mm -hmm. 31 was the show opener. I think this very well could be the show opener. Good point. Uh, and really set the pace for the show. Um, I think that'd be a good idea. Um, the other, my, my little asterisk, my little thing about this match, <coughs> my 
My little side note. I'm worried about Enzo. Yeah. <coughs> I, yeah Enzo I, has been on the receiving end of a couple, like, dangerous spots in the past. And, I mean, has, like, literally hurt himself doing simple-esque yeah. maneuvers. Um, so I'm kind of worried about him going into this He's high good. profile. His very first WrestleMania. WrestleMania. And it's in a three-way tag team ladder match. That's a hell of a WrestleMania debut. Um, who knows? It's, uh, I'm, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it's going to be fun. And at least we're going to get a lot of oohs and ahs out of people getting the shit kicked out of yeah. with ladders. We might talk about a shit, but we're hopeful that all of these matches are great. Yeah, it's WrestleMania, so, I mean... We don't want WrestleMania to fail. Yeah. We just don't have a lot of faith in this specific in what's happening currently. We're, we're feeling very WrestleMania 27 with this WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, on to another match. This is the match that I am surprised is not no disqualification. I'm surprised it's not street fight. I'm surprised there's no stipulation. I think I there's going to be an added stipulation. I wouldn't be shocked. The Intercontinental Championship match, Dean Ambrose versus Baron Corbin, mainly because the most of the build-up for this in the last few weeks has been them fighting all over the arenas. Yeah, it, it just it it screams street fight, and I think it would be great for Dean to have sort of a of a redemption moment after having to just kind of hand Brock Lesnar a win last year. Baby Brock Lesnar through a street fight so he can go into his UFC yeah. fight with Mark the, Hunt. The, that is one thing that I can give to Baron Corbin <coughs> is I don't see Baron Corbin being like, oh man, I want to take it easy in this match. Baron Corbin's going to look to fucking impress yeah. in this match. So I think... This is his one year anniversary of being on the main yeah. roster. So, so yeah, he is, lo he is looking to go out there, impress just a, like... People didn't expect him to win the Andre Battle no. Royale last year, and he did. So people are going to be looking to Baron Corbin like, are you going to make this a reoccurring theme where you are constantly surprising the crowd at WrestleMania? On top of that, Dean Ambrose is a fantastic champion. He is the king of the street fight. That's, that's his mentality is a street fight. So I would want their stipulation to be on here, or I just want both of them to go out there and just bust their fucking ass. So I'm curious, who are you going for on this one? I'm going to go with a Dean Ambrose retention. Yeah? I think this, <coughs> this is going to be Dean Ambrose's big moment. I do see Baron Corbin taking the title off of him, but not at WrestleMania. As much as this pains me to say... Oh my god. I'm going for Baron Corbin. Holy shit. WWE seems to see a lot of potential in Baron Corbin. Literally putting him in all the high-profile, like, multi-person matches this year mm -hmm. that have been on, like, this calendar year since WrestleMania. That's fair. Including the Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship over on SmackDown. <laughs> um, he was there. So, I, this is, this is going to be his big moment. I, unfortunately, it's being kind of truthful that the crowd isn't nearly as hot for Dean Ambrose as in, like, the last two years. Yeah. He's really fizzling out because WWE seems to, like, get him up really high in, like, some, like, awesome moments. And then he sort of, like, drifts into being either non-existent or being goofy. Yeah. They, 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 don't, know how to <coughs> con they don't know how to be consistent with Dean Ambrose. Yeah. He, ha he has peaks and valleys. Yeah, he doesn't. And right now we're we're going into a valley. Yeah, uh, we're in the Dean Dean Ambrose low spot. Uh, Baron Corbin is getting a push here. All right. I'm like right. you're saying with with him doing WrestleMania moments of like wowing the crowd. I think that's what they're going for is WrestleMania at least for like the next two years. This year and next year, Corbin's gonna be like topping himself, sort of. Yeah. Right, we got si uh, we got we got six more matches to do. Let's yeah. Start knocking um, these fuckers out. All right, so we need a bathroom break at WrestleMania. John Cena and Nikki Bella versus The Miz and Maurice with that one guy, a special guest ring announcer from some news show. Um, I'm just kidding. He's Al Roker. He's super famous as far as, like, news Today Show stuff goes. Has no reason um, to be there, but he's there. Yeah, it's random as fuck. But they just want some get those, sort of celebrity. Gotta get those celebrities involved, don't you? Yeah. Because it's um, WrestleMania. No. Yeah, I'm going with John Cena and Nikki Bella. I'm going with Miz and Maurice. Yeah, it's... I don't know. 
I think you're just betting against the the big money there. I, you know, the the last couple promos have made me interested. I want this match. I said it on SmackDown. I want this match to live up to the hype that these last couple promos have given it. Yeah, for real. I want them to fucking <coughs> go out there and kill it and make people go, man, I'm glad that match was there. So yeah. I'm hopeful for it. And I think it's I think it's smarter money giving the win to Miz and Maurice. That's why I'm going with them because I think I should write them to be. <laughs> uh, all right, another non championship related match: oh. Shane McMahon versus AJ Styles. Another match where I'm not I'm I'm a little surprised that it's not some sort of crazy stipulation. And AJ Styles even brought that up himself on the SmackDown promo. You're not. This isn't a Hell in a Cell match. This isn't a street fight. This is a wrestling match between yeah. you and me. I, you know, AJ, if you watched Shane in like the 90s, though, he did a good handful of not street fight style matches. Was the European champion. As Thomas Wolfe says, he's the best non-wrestling wrestler. Yeah. Um, this is another one a lot like... Uh, Undertaker Roman Reigns that has the potential to be like the show ceiling match like mm -hmm. awesome above awesome or potentially just because we might just see the fact that Shane is old and maybe can't hang with AJ Styles it could end up being a grave disappointment yeah um, but I'm being hopeful I am too I, I'm excited to see what they can do um, especially watching like Shane McMahon knock himself out the last time he wrestled you know yeah like the guy fucking has no boundaries he just Shane just does things. Yeah. And if you've seen the giant wrestling ring on top of the lighting thing, he's jumping off of that. I swear to God. Um, he's he's going to look up there and he's going to go. He hasn't even seen it yet. When he shows up, like, Friday night, he's going to come out and go, oh, I'm going to do it. Yeah. See that thing? Tall thing? I'm going to jump. Steve, Steve Blackman's up there and just hits him with a kendo stick. AJ says, like, like, he's like, AJ, you can move if you want. I don't care. I'm going to jump. You can move. Undertaker before, moved last you, year. You can so. move before I jump. I'm yeah. still jumping. Do whatever you feel <coughs> necessary. Uh, I'm going with AJ Styles on this one. I'm going with AJ as well. Uh, I think it's, I don't know. I don't really have a good rationale for it other than the fact that it makes sense. I'm just really interested to see what this match is going to be. Yeah. That's literally, I, I just, I want to know what's going to happen. All right, knocking out some more Raw championships. Uh, fatal four-way elimination match for the Raw Women's Championship. Mm -hmm. Bailey, Sasha, Charlotte, Nia Jax. Yep. Who, uh, who's got your picks? Bailey. Oh, uh, this one, yeah, Bailey. All right, well, you know what? We're going to be in agreement. Bailey's going to have a WrestleMania moment. All right. Uh, don't let us down, Bailey. Um, this is going to be very pseudo the Wrestle... I made this comparison on Raw. The, uh, very pseudo the WrestleMania 2000, uh, thing. Except we're going to have a babyface outcome. Yeah, we're not going to get, uh, we're not going to get Vince McMahon turning on The Rock. Yeah. And joining with Triple H. Because there's no McMahon in every corner of this go-around. Nope. Uh, I think, uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, Nia gets eliminated first, and then we get an awesome breakdown of... Uh, triple threat -ness. I think Sasha's probably gonna be the second one out. You think you think it's gonna you think it's gonna go down? Yeah. Okay, it's gonna be Charlotte's final. Like she officially lost. There's you know yeah. she can't say anything about it. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm down for that. <clears throat> and then also we have the United States Championship. I am so excited for this. Chris match. Jericho versus Kevin Owens. This is gonna be a fantastic. This match. is gonna be great. Um. Gosh, I do have a hard time deciding who I want to win this match too. Uh, I I want both of them to win. I yeah, I'm okay regardless of who wins. I I have my pick based on outside things that people do. Ah, uh, uh, I have I'm picking probably the same person you're gonna pick then, but for different reasons. Okay. Uh, I'm picking Kevin Owens. We're both going Kevin Owens. Um. But not because of Fozzie-related issues. So I'm guessing that's what you're going about. Yeah. Because Jer Fozzie Jericho's supposed to be going on uh, on tour pretty soon. So. Yeah. But Fozzie's released their tour dates, and none of them are on Mondays. Yeah. So... That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to keep the title, though. 
No, that's what I'm saying, but I don't think he's going to be off Ross either. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying he's going to be off Ross. I just think the fact that he is going to be doing... that He's going to be in a much smaller spot on Raw. Yes. Because he's going to be exerting himself during concerts and whatnot. Not to say that he won't be able to go on <coughs> Raw, but... DDP yoga, bro. Absolutely. All right, we've got three matches left, and I saved the non-championship match that probably has the most build-up and ha means more than any of the other non-championship matches, Seth Rollins and Triple H, the non-sanctioned match. And I'm wondering, non-sanctioned, does this mean it's going to be no disqualification? I'm pretty sure. The same way Triple H versus Shawn Michaels 10 years yeah, ago was well, non-sanctioned. Well, because Triple H specifically said oh, he's gonna grab his crutch. That, that if I grab that crutch, That's wrap true. it around your knee, you can't sue me, you can't sue my wife, you can't sue the company... So yeah. I think Triple H has in his mind he is going to use anything and everything, especially a sledgehammer, because he can. And especially a Samoa Joe. And potentially a Kevin Owens. Yeah. Which I think, I'm going for Seth Rollins, because I think in a surprise turn of events, Finn Balor is going to come out and help him. Ah, that'd be rad. Um, I'm going Seth Rollins simply because Triple H comes back at WrestleMania to put people the fuck over now. That also. That's Triple That's Triple H's new job. Triple H doesn't have to win because he's still Triple H. I mean, he did beat Sting at 31, let's be honest. But WrestleMania 30, he came up to put Daniel Bryan over. Yeah. Last year, he came up to put Roman Reigns over. This year, he's coming up to put... Seth Rollins over to put Seth Rollins right back in the championship picture. Absolutely. Speaking of the championship picture, the potentially 34 second long match, or I'm, I'm holding hopes that this goes at least four minutes of uh, just them doing finishing moves back and forth. Uh, not really. Uh, the Universal Championship, Goldberg. In his big comeback story, like I said, theme of WrestleMania, coming back versus Bork Laser with the Paul versus the ringside. I foresee Paul Heyman getting speared again. Possibly. Possibly. Um, but I have to go with Brock Lesnar. Yep. Goldberg's contract is supposed to be up the day after WrestleMania. And apparently he feels miserable on his current run right now. Really? He's just, like, stressed out all the time. There's an article on Yahoo where he's just talking about, he's like, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it's worth it, but he's just, he just doesn't. It's because Goldberg doesn't have an off switch. Sure. And he's like, and he, he mentioned this before, earlier, is that it's a lot harder for him now to live up to the Goldberg of back then. Because he is a lot older, so it takes a lot more for him to keep in this, the kind of shape you want to be in when you're wearing nothing but swim trunk style fucking tights on TV. Mm -hmm. And he's like 50, 51 years old, up in that area. Yeah. I mean, he's a good looking grandpa man, but, uh, you know, but this is it. This is his run. He's, he's one and done. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if he comes back as like a surprise rumble guy in a year or two. Uh, but... Uh, you know, put Brock over, let Brock put somebody else over, the end. Both you guys can leave. Please and thank you. Your vote is? I already said hello to me. What was that? I already said hello. Who? I already said Lesnar, God damn it. <laughs> Brock Lesnar for him. Okay, um. I didn't want to talk about the match anymore, I was done with it. Yeah. I've been done with it since... Goldberg came back. Alright, here's a match that I was super excited for, but the last few weeks of SmackDown have been leaving me lacking. But I'm still more excited for it than Brock Lesnar versus Goldberg. That's why it's last on this list. It's Bray Wyatt defending the SmackDown Championship against Randall Keith Orton. The only thing that would make me still as excited as I was before all of the weird shit is if Luke Harper was, still, was in it. Yeah. Um, but <coughs> I'm a huge fan of both Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. 
They are both fantastic workers. Uh, it's very, especially with this resurgence of Randy Orton, he hasn't really had a bad match. Yeah. And Bray knows how to, you know, he, he knows how to put on a good match on the regular. So I, I have no, nothing in me says this is going to be a bad match. Yeah. The story, though, kind of takes me out of the match itself, and I'm hoping that there isn't, like, some sort of, like, supernatural... Voodoo bullshit during the match? None of that. Just fucking wrestle. Do you want the Fog Wyatt to come back? I like the Fog Wyatt. I thought that was cool, but no. Don't do it anymore. We're done with that. Fog Wyatt was considered one of the worst moments of that year. I liked it. I don't give a shit. Um. Yeah, just just go and have a good match. That's all I want from this match. Who do you see winning this match? Randy Orton. Yeah, me too. But for the sake of keeping things interesting, I'm voting for Bray Wyatt. Oh. All right. I would have said Randy Orton. Had this been a triple threat match. Really? Yeah. Because the idea of Luke Harper and Randy Orton both having a common enemy uh, would have uh, okay. really fed into getting rid of Wyatt in this match. And then Orton with the way more experience, way more experience, uh, but you know, having way more WrestleMania experience. You know, being able to pull a fast one over on Harper, RKO on one guy, RKO on both guys, Randy Orton wins. Mm. I think all this build-up, we're going to have uh, Bray is still going to weasel one out. All right. This is another one of those matches where I don't care who wins. I, as long as it's a decent match. I just want it to be a good match because <coughs> I like both guys. Both of them make fantastic champions. Do what you're going to do. Don't pretend to be The Undertaker. Yeah. Can we, can we make a little interesting note here? Okay. Uh, before we talk about the WrestleMania wager. Yes. Um, a couple of key people not in matches at WrestleMania. Luke Harper. Yeah. Not, not in a match and wasn't announced as a member of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. No, and especially with this new, this this refurbished look. and just Which we saw for the first time on SmackDown. He this looked week. fucking fantastic yeah. on SmackDown. Like, He's even, got the more form for His jeans, mannerisms have changed. Them. Yeah. It is so fucking cool. I want him involved. And I somehow. love the Luke chance. Yeah. I just I, I I can only hope that if Bray Wyatt regardless of who wins this, Luke Harper will be in the title picture <coughs> post WrestleMania. I, I absolutely hope so. That 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 is my only that's the only thing that SmackDown needs to do for me post WrestleMania is make sure that Luke Harper stays relevant in this title picture post-WrestleMania. All right, one more. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, I understand why. Um, I still feel like we should have just got him versus Sami Zayn. Yeah, because, I mean, for um, me, I feel like it was a waste to bring him up. It was so close to WrestleMania season. He's only been in a handful of matches, and... Here, okay, so here, here's here's my thing with Samoa <coughs> Joe. I assumed he was either going to come back and, he, you know, there was a, the initial... For some reason, him and Sami Zayn were doing things. I thought they were going to do that for WrestleMania. Then I thought, okay, well, Finn is back, so there's a chance that maybe they're going to do that, but they didn't bring Finn back prior to WrestleMania. Yeah. So now, I'm based on what I said about Seth Rollins versus Triple H... Samoa Joe is going to be Triple H's weapon. Finn Balor is going to be this out of nowhere, why would he help Seth Rollins, the guy who injured him? You know, why would he do that? But then you can have Finn Balor go, well, he didn't injure me on purpose, plus he, you know, he was in this, he said himself he was trying to find Seth Rollins again. Yeah. He was still that, he was still the Triple H guy back at SummerSlam. Yeah. So the fact that Triple H was specifically trying to eliminate this guy, and I've had battles with Samoa Joe. Yeah, I mean, he could literally just—he could literally just have the argument. I don't like Samoa Joe. Yeah, 
So I'm I, I'm not I'm not surprised that Samoa Joe isn't in a match just based on the fact that I think he is specifically being used as a pivotal piece in the storyline to jumpstart whatever is going to happen for the rest of the year. His first big big marquee match is going to be SummerSlam. Yeah. That's that's going to be that's going to be his thing. So is there, is there anybody else that you're kind of like <sighs> um why aren't they on the card? For me it's more of the cruiserweights. Yeah. I I feel like this being the first WrestleMania with cruiserweights, you'd really want to be pushing that brand once again, especially because 205 Live isn't doing as well as you want it to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, other people from NXT, like, like Shinsuke, uh, why he's not being, you know, put in like, hey, Shinsuke Nakamura's here, you know. Obviously, his whole storyline kind of changed stuff for that. The fact that Ty Dillinger isn't officially on the roster yet, uh, but could potentially be... Um, yeah, I, I think I I think Joe and Harper are kind of like I, th I think I think for me Harper is the most surprising as to yeah. why. And despite the fact like they're not being put in high profile matches, just to like say like okay they're doing their own things. I mean they could be used as catalysts in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal to have like just more names to attract people's attention to it. Yeah, because it, but it's it's WWE's way of saying like oh but if they get eliminated they're gonna look weak. Yeah. At this point, they're literally the only names that matter in the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal are Strowman, Show, and Zayn. Yeah, they're the only ones that matter. No one from SmackDown matters, which bothers me. That's the one thing that bothers me the most about WrestleMania is that there's no SmackDown tag team title match. Yeah, that, that is, despite the fact that I don't give the slightest shit about Goldberg versus Lesnar, the fact that I hate the fact that all of these matches are on the pre-show. The fact that um, the, the most simple match they could have made was a rematch between the Usos and American Alpha isn't on the show at all, and they're being used as fodder for the Battle Royal irks me to no fucking end. Yeah. <coughs> okay, let's be real. We've said a lot of negative things yes. about this WrestleMania. But like he has said... I'm it's WrestleMania, man. I want to reiterate, we're holding out hopes that these matches are good. Because that's all we can really hold on to right now. We want to... When we review this in probably a two-part video next week, we want to say positive things. We want to say, like, okay, we didn't care about the storyline, but man, that match fucking rocked. Yeah. That, that's it. I don't care if the storylines... You know, the storylines leading up, if every single match on this card is awesome... You win. Yeah, like if your Simple blow off, if your blow off match rocks, then the build up, you know what? We can set aside the build up for the fact that your blow off match rocked my socks off. It's all that matters at this point. And if there's any time your blow off match needs to rock, it's Wrestle Fucking Mania. Yeah. Especially when it's called the Ultimate Thrill Ride. If your match sucks at the Ultimate Thrill Ride, you miss the fucking boat. You're not thrilling, nor are you a ride. Sure, what he said. You know, there's going to be some, like, wrestling theme park where there's a giant bungee, you know, like the bungee fucking drop things. Mm -hmm. There's one that's going to, like, bungee slingshot you backwards, and it's just called the Brock Lesnar. <laughs> it's like, that's, it simulates the feeling of getting German, German suplex. Just a German suplex. But, like, you know, like a 90 mile an hour German suplex, which is probably what it feels like when Brock Lesnar actually throws you. Terrifying. Talk about the wager. Forgot about the wager for a second. <laughs> <coughs> so, this being WrestleMania, a big one. We're going to throw back to, if you go to the wager playlist, which I think is over at Reasonable Wrestling yep. Fans. Yep, over on Reasonable Wrestling Fans. Reasonable there is w, a, like like WrestleMania. Like wrestling. Oh, I like what you did there. There is a specific playlist for the punishment videos that we started back uh, on SummerSlam. Yeah. Um, we're going to throw back to the original wager video, which is me hitting with a kendo stick. And I'm hoping that doesn't happen to me this time. We're going to the kendo stick. Uh, the Kendo Stick Shot, um, how many disagreements did we have? We have six. So then we'll go by disagreements then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rather than winner versus loser. Yeah, yeah. Because we had uh, quite a few disagreements. Um, so essentially, one of us could be getting hit with the Kendo Stick six times if one of us loses all of the disagreements. Uh, you know, but it could, uh, three I think would be like what the minimum you could do. One, yeah. I guess, really. It, well, yeah. 
The, I mean, I guess there are quite a bit of different variables. I mean, it really yeah. depends on how many you win by as far as... Because, I mean, you know, one person could run them all, or it could be very back and forth. It's, it's hard to tell at this point. But yeah. there will be... Anywhere from one to six, six shots from a kendo stick. Uh, and we're going to be at a sizable WrestleMania party. Yeah. So the kendo stick shots are not going to be all delivered by the hands of winner to loser, like last time we did it, when I hit him. Yep. Uh, we're going to be employing the friends of ours, friends in quotation marks at this point, for uh, doling out the punishment. And we know that we've got a handful of friends there that are handy with a kendo stick. There might even be a baby involved. There could potentially be a baby involved. Um, but don't worry, the parents will be there. Yeah. It's, we're not, we're not like stealing someone's baby. We're not saying that the baby's going to be getting hit with a kendo stick. No! That's baby's not, not wagering. Not happening. God damn. But yes, there, there may be a baby involved. So potentially one of us is going to get hit six times with a kendo stick, or... More, not more, less. One or more, six or less. It's going to happen. You'll see that over on Reasonable Wrestling Fans. We're going to, we have some backlogged fucking yeah, things yeah. that we're going to be hitting up pretty soon. Yeah. Um, but this one's probably going to go up pretty fast since we're going to be doing it. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably happen immediately. Party. It'll probably be uploaded legitimately after WrestleMania. Yeah. Because it'll probably be recorded on this phone. And then just straight upload it. So, it'll be up real quick. So, yeah. Tune in over to Reasonable Wrestling Fans. So, this video has been long. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click the links. There's Check out the podcast. Links, links Check out all the videos. Down Check down. out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. There's going to be more after wrestling. WrestleMania. Jesus. Thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Let's hope WrestleMania is awesome. Fuck yeah.